Takeoff flap settings are more important for jets than they are for light aircraft. Full flaps typically reduce stall speed by less than 10 knots for light airplanes. However, the stall speed reduction for jets is usually 60 to 70 knots, so the choice of takeoff flap setting is critical in minimizing ground run while providing adequate climb performance. The jet transport used in the following simulations has seven flap positions. Flaps up, 1, 5, 15, 20, 25, and 30. Unlike light airplanes, where the flap settings typically indicate the number of degrees of deflection of trailing edge flaps, flap settings for jets with their complex wings usually are just position identifications that may not be related to their physical characteristics. For example, flaps one on one particular airliner means that the leading edge slats are fully extended while the trailing edge flaps remain retracted. Another airliner has flap position simply designated as flaps one, two, three, and four. The following simulations examine takeoff performance for each flap setting using the appropriate rotation and climb airspeeds, which vary with the stall speed for each flap position. All takeoffs are at 320,000 pounds, the maximum gross weight. Since takeoff distance and climb performance are based on an engine out situation, all comparisons will include an engine failure at V1. The first takeoff will be with flaps up. The distance to reach 35 feet and the average climb angle and gradient will be shown in the data box on the upper right portion of the screen. Next will be a flaps 1 takeoff. Notice the tremendous decrease in ground run. On this flaps 5 takeoff, the ground run is slightly shorter, but the climb angle is not as good as flaps 1. This flaps 15 takeoff ground run is shorter than flaps 5, but with significantly less climb angle. This flaps 20 takeoff is only slightly shorter than flaps 15, but has a significantly reduced climb angle, although the climb angle still meets the second segment climb requirement. A flaps 25 takeoff just barely meets the second segment climb standard, but the ground run is longer than flaps 20, so it is not a takeoff flaps choice. Looking at the flaps 30 takeoff, it is obviously not a choice for takeoff flaps either.
Let's look at a close-up of the data. We see that flaps up is not an option due to the extremely long takeoff distance, which is due to the very high stall speed in the cruise configuration. Flaps 25 and flaps 30 are also not an option due to long ground runs and poor climb performance. These last two settings are landing flaps and are designed to provide additional drag with only minor reductions in stall speed. The additional drag requires higher power settings during final approach. When operating at higher RPM, jet engines respond faster, which makes airspeed control more precise. For the four practical takeoff flap settings, flaps 1, flaps 5, flaps 15, and flaps 20, we see a common trend. Each additional flap setting reduces the ground run, which is good, but also decreases the climb angle, which is not, although all four climb gradients do meet second segment climb requirements. Therefore, flaps 1 would be selected for long runways where good climb performance is required. Flaps 15 or 20 would be selected for shorter runways without serious obstructions. Flaps 5 then becomes the normal takeoff setting since it provides both a moderate takeoff distance and climb angle that apply to runways that are not considered to be short and to departure paths with no unusual challenges. Now let's look at what happens if takeoff flaps fail to be set. This is a normal flaps 5 takeoff with all engines operating. Now with flaps still up, we will assume that flaps 5 has been set and will rotate to the initial climb attitude at the VR for flaps 5. Upon reaching climb attitude, we see that we have not left the ground and it is too late to stop. At the end of this 16,000 foot runway, the airplane finally leaves the ground and we add a few degrees of pitch to clear a building in front of us. Unfortunately, after gaining a little over 100 feet, our flight ends. Let's repeat the previous situation on an 11,000 foot runway, except that after rotation, flaps 5 will be set during the takeoff run.
since this will work only if the flaps up condition is recognized and there is time for the flaps to extend this procedure is generally not used current jet transports have a configuration warning that sounds whenever takeoff power is added and flaps are not in a takeoff position standard procedure in this case is to immediately abort the takeoff and sort out the problem on the ground this video points out that what may be an insignificant error in a light airplane can be a fatal error in a jet.